Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this lesson, we are going to continue talking about image formation. And this time we were going to be looking at image formation using mirrors. So we've looked at how lenses can form images. Now we want to see how mirrors can also form images. So let's go ahead and get started here. And what we want to look at first of all, are what are the different types of mirrors? Well, one type of mirror with which you're familiar is a flat mirror. A flat mirror will reflect uh, uh, light off of it directly. And if you recall the law of reflection that said that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. So as things come in, they bounce straight off. So if there is an object here and light is traveling to the mirror and then bounces off at it back to somebody's eye, we then look and we see the image behind the mirror. So we can trace those rays backwards and we will see a virtual image. So not an actual image, but a virtual image. Remember that the light rays don't actually hit there. So we see a virtual image in this. So a flat mirror will produce a virtual image. And you've done that and you've looked at things in a mirror, I'm sure, in the past. Now that's one type of mirror and that's the one you're most familiar with but often used are other types of mirrors which are concave and convex mirrors. So let's look at concave mirrors here a concave mirror curved inward and we can have two different types of these mirrors we can have a spherical mirror or a parabolic mirror. Now in a spherical mirror shown on the left here, the rays do not converge at the same point. There's no well defined focal point here. So you note that there isn't a specific focal point in a spherical mirror. A parabolic mirror on the other hand, all rays will converge at the focal point. So here we see we do have a very well defined focal point that occurs. So often in things like telescopes, a parabolic mirror will be used because it will bring everything all the light from all parts of it to the same focus. However, we can also often use spherical mirrors because a spherical mirror is much easier to make than a parabolic mirror. So the shape of a sphere very easy to uh, grind. And if the spherical mirror is small compared to its radius, it will behave like a parabolic mirror. So for relatively small spherical mirrors, if its would, radius would be much, much larger than this, then it will essentially act like a parabolic mirror. So in some cases, you can actually use a spherical mirror easier to make, but still get the effect of having a specific focal point like the parabolic mirror. Now, as we continue, let's remind ourselves of some of the things we've looked at. First of all, the power of a mirror we've looked at before. The power is one over the focal length and the focal length of a mirror is given by the radius divided by two. So the radius is the radius of curvature of the mirror. So how big the mirror would actually be. A small radius of curvature would have a smaller focal length and therefore a more powerful mirror. So you want a small focal length. Remember when this is small, the focal length, then this, the power becomes much larger. So the smaller radius of curvature will give you a smaller focal length, which gives you a more powerful mirror. So let's look at the other type of mirror that we have, which is a convex mirror. In this case, we are looking at this side and how it bows outward. And we have that the focal point is actually behind the mirror. So the focal length is actually negative. And the focal length and power will be negative because this is a diverging mirror. Things are spreading outward when light reflects off this type of mirror. It all spreads outward and appears to come from a focal point behind the mirror. But we will see both the focal length and the power will be negative in this case when we calculate these. Now let's look at an example of calculating uh, this for one of these mirrors. And let's say that we have a mirror that has a radius of curvature of 20 meters. And we want to find the focal length and the power of the telescope. So r is 20 meters. And then we know that the focal length is then half of that or 10 meters. 
And the power is then one over the focal length. So one over 10 meters would be 0.1 meters to the negative one power or 0.1 D 0.1 diopters. Remember that is the optical measure of power of op measure of optical power. So we can do quick calculations like that to get the power to get the focal length from a uh, spherical uh, sorry from a from a mirror convex or concave mirror. Now the last thing I wanted to look at here was looking at ray tracing. We looked at ray tracing previously for lenses. How about for mirrors? Well, we can do the same kind of thing. So here we have depending on what we're looking at. So let's start looking at concave mirrors, which is this, these two. So a ray approaching a concave mirror parallel to the axis. So as a ray comes in parallel to the axis, it will then be reflected back through the focal point. So that's this ray here going straight and coming back down through the focal point to the image. We also know that a ray approaching a concave mirror through its focal point is reflected parallel. So that would be the ray going through the focal point, then striking the mirror. It will then be reflected parallel to the axis. And we can see where those meet at the top of our image. The third rule here applies to both concave and convex mirrors is that any ray striking the center of the mirror is follow we can follow that by following the law of reflection so the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection so if it comes in at a specific angle strikes the center of the mirror it comes off at exactly the same angle and note that all three of those define where the image of this key will end up being they will all intersect at the same point at some distance from the mirror now we can do the same thing with a concave mirror. So here for a concave mirror, we just have a couple of different uh, rules, sorry, a convex mirror, we have the couple different rules, that's these two. And this one still applies. So a ray striking the center will still follow the law of reflection. So it will come down, strike the center and then go straight back out, looking like it came from back this direction. Now the other two are very similar to what we looked at before a ray approaching the convex mirror parallel to the axis. So this ray approaches parallel will appear to come from the focal point. So this one goes here diverges out this way but then appears to come from the focal point back behind the mirror. And we will get a uh, the other one says that a ray approaching the diverging mirror by heading towards the focal point is reflected parallel. So that is ray three here that is heading straight towards the focal point and it ends up coming back parallel. And what does that mean? Well, our image then appears here behind the mirror. So we are going to get a virtual image back behind the mirror of our object. And depending on exactly the positioning here, we note that the image will actually appear smaller than the original object. But we can use those three ray tracing rules for the convex and concave mirrors to figure out where the image will be in any case like this. So let's go ahead and finish up uh, with our summary. And what we found is we looked at flat mirrors and they follow the law of reflection. So the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection and they form virtual images. We looked at concave and convex mirrors, concave or converging mirrors, convex or diverging mirrors. For the concave mirror, they have a focal point in front of the mirror. The convex mirror has the focal point behind the mirror. And we looked at the ray tracing rules for mirrors, which allow us to determine location and size of the image that will be formed. So that concludes this lecture on image formation in mirrors. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.